So we'll come back. Now here and then we are into the next day's program of this fusion procurement implementation. We are into CPA. Fine. PR, CPA, SPO combination we are in. So let me go the <coughs> Let me log in and click on sign in. So I go to the procurement and then I go to the purchase agreements. Now. And then click on it and then here you go there and then have a look at manage agreements. So click on manage agreements and then you're going to have a look at the agreements. So click on search, we'll be finding one CPA being created. So the contract purchase agreement, if you go on then click on the underscore of it now. It has got attachment as well as it has got a this thing. Now. And click on it. 2000 is an agreement. You go there. Till now it says the released amount is zero actually. Fine. Nothing has been released again. There's no minimum release is 100. And then the maximum is 1000 now. And then click on it. And then if you go to the notes and attachments, you can now see an attachment over here. So we have a CP attachment over here. We have a CPA note and then a CPA note to receive actually. So against which uh, we have created a CPO now. Fine. A PO has been created. I click on the now. Fine. 2000. Click on the now. We have created a PO. We'll now click on done and then come out of it now. And then go there. Click on the manage orders and then have a look at it now. Go to the manage orders. And then we are going to have <clears throat> go there. And then I click on search now. So once when you give a search. I will now remove the buyer name and then search now. Uh, this one is an important one. Mm. Uh, it's a key 99. Let's put sub one. And then click on search now. So we are going to see the orders now. Right? It's an incomplete order, 3005. And click on it. 3005 is an incomplete order. I think it is not our order actually. Uh, okay, somebody has uh, tested it actually. Rather, I might have tested it. Uh, I will now go there, click on done, and then I will now have a look at uh, uh, the requisitions now, find purchase requisitions. What are the latest requisition uh, which has been converted? I think 1016. I'm not exactly remembering it actually. <clears throat> And the 1016, yeah. The one. If you get 1016 position <coughs> against which your yeah, PO will now see this number. Click on it. And then here uh, we have the charge account, everything over there now. And then if you go and then click on the blue icon on this now, and click on the blue icon, it will now show you what. I click on the blue icon. And then if you click on the blue icon, it will now say it is under the processing basically. Right? It will now say it is under process by the buyer actually. The buyer is processing it 1016. Will now give it up. It's not shown me now. I don't know it's so. Otherwise, it will now give you a clear indication about it is now uh, under automation by the buyer actually. So click on the now. Will now go and then have a look at the purchase orders. 1016 is the requisition number. Click on it. We'll go there. Go to the process requisition and have a look at it now. 1016. So requisition number is 1016. And then remove the buyer and then query. Click on search. I might have converted into a purchase order, I think, but that's why it's not visible here. No, fine. It has been converted actually. So if you go to the purchase orders again, you can click on them. So we'll now query on the manage orders for a requisition number of 1016. Fine. The requisition number is not coming now. <clears throat> the requisition number is here. 1016. And then make a search now. So 3006 is the purchase order number. If you go and then have a look at it, 3006 is the purchase order number which has been created. Now. And then this is not reflecting on 2000 now. It is not reflecting because it is an incomplete status actually. It is on an incomplete status and so what happens? It's not reflecting over there now. So let us go there and then approve it actually. And it has got attachment as well as it has got a, this thing now. If you click on the attachment, the line level attachment, if you go on and click on it. <clears throat> so you're able to see the CP attachment over here now. But your PR attachment, I don't know where exactly it is getting reflected. It will be coming somewhere. I don't know. 
because in one of the implementations in coip when we were implementing it for tawasul tawasul telecom they have lots of uh, what happens a requirement on the requisition I and mean, that they make it as attachment and then that attachment will be sent to the supplier actually i don't know why the pr attachment is not coming anywhere line level also it's not coming there is notes and attachments there is notes and attachments we go there and we'll see here we have an attachment you can click on it now notes and attachments click on it is again a cp attachment only why the pr attachment is not coming if you go on the notes at least pr notes is coming yes yes, yes. i think they write everything on the pr notes section whatever they need they don't do as an attachment as i remember it is uh, they write as a notes now fine to the supplier what are all they need along with the material actually so that comes as a pr note yes, yes i remember that they are not having an attachment but attachment also has to come somewhere now. pr notes is coming they used to put a notes and then uh, that used to come over here now at least here it's okay the notes and attachments in the details if you go on and see click on the details <clears throat> Okay, PR attachment also has to come in somewhere else. It's not visible anything. No PR note to supplier. CP attachment is coming. PR note to supplier is coming. Actually, these are only things that are coming. So, okay, at least attachment uh, we will have to make an order. Why it's not coming? And at least the notes is coming. So we can ask the requester to write all the notes on the PR, and then that will be reflecting on the PO. <laughs> so you order. So you go there, and then it is in the status of incomplete now. Right? So, that, so I will now write to click on the duplicate it, and then see the approvals now. <clears throat> We have to make the approvals as automatic now. So click on it and then go to the setup and maintenance. <clears throat> click on search now. Yep. Manage document approvals. Manage document approvals. Manage purchasing document approvals. So here. This is now enabled now. So we click on it. Let's now see whether it is automatic or not. Go down. Fine. Here, tool always applies is enabled, and then uh, that is automatic. So it has to get approved now. <clears throat> I will now go to the purchase orders. <clears throat> so go to the purchase orders, and then here I will now go for what approval actions. And then we will now begin to edit more. Now. And then submit for approval. So three thousand six is the purchase order number which will be getting approved, and that will be reflecting on the it's called CP actually. Click on submit. So three thousand six is now getting submitted. So the total amount released shows agreement. In the order is less than the required minimum release. Yes, see the MR, the minimum release is now coming in the picture and then is not allowing you. So even though the customer, the requester wants only this, and it now comes to seventy five USD now, and it is not allowing you. So in which case, what happens? The purchase officer will be increasing the quantity mainly because what happens? He wants only fifty quantity, and then here what happens? He will now make it as what increasing to what seventy five quantities. So report it. What happens? It is more than hundred. So he's going to do it now. Fine, go click on it. So the moment you make a change on the line level, it will be getting reflected on the schedules as well as distributions. Also. Go to the schedule, and then we are changing it now. It's now seventy-five, and then the distribution also will be showing you seventy-five. It gets immediately percolated to the other areas. Now, fine, go click on it. Now it will not have any. So the requester needs fifty quantities, but since the supplier is saying the limit, what happens? The purchase officer will be able to justify this now. Thank you, say. Now, when you save it, you won't be finding any error at all. <clears throat> and then let me submit for approval. Click on submit. So the minimum release is now tested. Actually, the document has been submitted for approval. So we have to wait for some time for the document to get approved. Now, and we'll click on it. And then once when it gets approved, what happens? It will be visible on the agreement area. The three thousand six will be visible. Also, it is not possible like this in the EBS. Now, in EBS, it is not possible. So if you go to the manage agreements and then query the two thousand now, right? Agreement number is two thousand. Go there and then remove the buyer. And then click on search now. So 2000. If you make a query, you can now see it's open now. The released amount will be reflected over here the moment the thing gets uh, approved. So we had to wait for the 3006 to get approved. Click on search. It is approved. <clears throat> so the release is now ready. So if you click on the link, the hyperlink is available. That is not available in EBS at all. Fine. If you go there in the EBS, if you go to the purchase orders now, 
and all that. So click on it, and then let me query the contract purchase agreement. Okay, from query now. Contract. So here you don't have the released amount will be there. There will not. There is no hyperlink at all. So that has been introduced in Fusion actually on the contract purchase agreement. Against the release, what happens? We have a hyperlink available here now. And if you click on it, it will now say against this. What are all the POs which are there? And the hyperlink will tell you the 3006 PO will be shown over here. And you click on it, and then you can now see this 3006 against this. So that can be seen like this. Now. We have released 112, and then the maximum amount is 1000. Now, let us go there and then create a purchase requisition for this supplier. Now, so go there, click on it. You will now get another purchase requisition, which is now going to exceed this. More right. I click on the enter requisition line. This you will now create the one which is more than this. <clears throat> Remember, the requester is the ultimate authority in a procure to pay life cycle. Now, so we go there, and then we will now make it more than this. So I'll now put the contract purchase agreement and then 2000 is a number now. So 2000 is a number. And then let me have a quantity of what more than this. What is the quantity? And then here I will now put around say 800 quantities. So 800 quantities is now exceeding the limit of 1000 actually. Fine. It is now all the releases put together cannot exceed 1000. That is the one. I'm going to click on it. All the items are coming here. So let me add to the cart and then add it. Click on add to cart. So 1016 was the previous requisition. Now, what happens? It will be going for a new requisition. I go click on it. And then let us know. We go there and then click on approve. Now click on review and then approve it. So we are reviewing it now. I go click on it. So it's all reviewed. And go click on submit for approval. So it's 1017 now. Fine. So it's 1200. So this itself is exceeding 1000 actually. This itself will be exceeding. And then since we have a CPA for this now, right? click on OK now. We have already referred to one two thousand now. I click on it and see whether the reference is there or not. So two thousand. So the automation will fail actually. So it has to got so agreement is not over. But the automation will fail because it is a CPA level of automation. So the total automation is going to fail now. I click on done now. Because the price is not negotiated. Since CPA does not negotiate any items price actually. And so what happens, it will be coming as a and click on it. And now go there and then click on the process requisition and then query for this. 1017 I'm going to query. Requisition number 1017. And then give it a app. And then know the buyer. I'm going to make a query. Click on search. Here, it will now get stuck on the auto grade area. This is an auto grade area. And then you can see the yellow color mark now. And click on it. And then click on, click on the yellow color mark. It says what? The requisition line fails automation because the price is not negotiated. So when you are automating a PR, CPA, SPO combination, what happens? It will now create what? It will not automatically convert it, but it will now stop at this area. And click on it. We only have to manually build it. Right? Like what happens? You go to the auto create area and then you select it and then what happens? You, you create a purchase order. So likewise, what happens? You go there and then select the line and then click on add to document builder. So we're going to add to document builder. And then here, agreement number cannot be given because it is a CPA agreement. Only BPA agreements can be given on the source agreement now. And click on OK now. So by which the automation process, it will now bring it to the right hand side. All the data is now. And go there, click on it. And then here, you go there and then click on create. The supplier is already mentioned on the agreement now because of which order is now coming now. K99 sub 2 is a supplier actually. <clears throat> In the agreement number 2000, we already mentioned the supplier actually. So that will be used for this now. Fine. The document 3007 is now created. So we go there and then try to validate actions and then go to validate. This validation facility is not available in the EBS now. That is a new introduction in Fusion now. Click on validate. So once when you validate, it will now say, what are the problems which are there? So the total amount is 1,200. It is exceeding the 2000's document. What? 2000. It is not showing you the requisition number as well as the agreement number here now. Your order will now create the total amount released against this amount to exceed actually. But the requester wants this material. now. So the purchase officer has to meet the requester's demand or even he can even buy more, but he cannot buy less actually. Because the customer wants this much of money, 800 quantities, and then it is now moving more there. Then what he will do is he will now submit the, uh, we will now uh, enhance the, uh, this thing. 3007 is not getting approved now because the cumulative releases, all the releases against the SPO cumulative is exceeding 1000 actually. So what he will do is he will now go there because his uh, task is what? To meet the needs of the requester. Requester is the ultimate authority in a procure to pay life cycle. And so he has to be the request. You go there, go to the manager agreements, and then let us now query the 2000. 
agreement number 2 session ku kondu poriye agira no remove the buyer okay on search and then he will not edit it and you click on it so i will not go to the open it up and then he will not edit the command and you click on it so i will not go to actions and then edit the documents so here you know this will now create what a change order now it will be creating a change order in ebiz it will be creating a revision now fine here it is a change order so the revision is nothing but a change order but there when you make a revision we cannot understand what for the revision is made now and here what happens every change order will have a description every change order will be having a description of angle that fine i will now say announcement of amount and weight so we can even write a description for each and every change order so that what happens you can even take a report and then this functionality is not available in ebus fine on every change every revision why you are making a revision that is not there you will click on it i will now make it as what as a 5000 so the minimum release is honored which is not there in ebus that has been introduced over here now and then the this is the same functionality this has got the same functionality and let's take on it and then we are going to submit it click on submit now so we will now enhance it and then submit it so once when it is submitted what happens the change order one document has been what happens submitted for approval actually and let's take on okay so 2001 is now under approval now and click on done now and we go and query it now click on search now it will be pending approval now. it's no saying but if you click on the blue icon over here now and click on it what happens i change order spending and so what happens it is not the real status actually so the blue icon has to go away then only what happens the open status is the real open open is nothing but an approved now i click on it and then click on search again the blue icon has to go away it is now gone now right now it is approved so the revised it doesn't show me the what happens the change order number maybe through view columns we can even reduce the uh, what happens the change order numbers actually the latest change order is always effective now. the previous change orders will not be used like in ebus also ebus also the previous revisions will no more be eligible for any activity actually only on the back end we can query here also the previous change orders can be seen only on the back end the front end the latest change order will be the effective one so click on done now now we will now go there and then query over 3017 now i click on it and then we will now go and query it now click on it i will now go to the manage orders and then 3017 i am going to make a query now p0171 okay <coughs> sometimes the buyer also will go Because it's a buyer actually. Three zero one seven. Oh God, it's not coming. So we'll not remove the buyer name. Let me search now. Three zero one seven has to come now. It's not coming. Managing orders. Order the team which is missing here now. If you remove the order number and make a search now. Supplier is K ninety nine. It is a sub two actually. Three zero one seven. Three zero zero seven again. I made a mistake now. I don't know three zero one seven. Three zero zero seven actually. I made a mistake. You are not coming. So what happens? You are getting the note. The CP is the note to supplier. Note to receiver is coming. And then here in this place, the attachment is coming. If you click on attachment now. I am not giving any notes over here, and the CPR attachment is only coming. So, if you are given a PR note, that will be coming over here. So, if PR note is missing, then the CPA note is coming. Remember, if you don't give any PR note, the CPA note is coming. Otherwise, the PR note is definitely coming. That is a very excellent one. Then, uh, uh, that way, what happens? You get very well covered. Now, let us now go there. Good actions, and then here, what happens? Go to edit now. Now, if you go and then validate it, it will not have any problem at all because the base document 2000 is already done. Then, go to the actions and go to validate. Then here, what happens? You can now see that there is no errors at all. Now you can very well submit it. Click on submit. And so this document will also get added to the CP actually. Right? You know that. So go there. Click on done now. And three thousand seven is also added. Three thousand six hundred is also added. Click on done now. And then there is no submitted for approval. And then here you go there. You go to the what's called. Uh, you go there and then click on the manage agreements and then have a look at it now. Manage agreements. Have a look at it. Both the documents will be displayed over here. Agreement number in two thousand. And then go there. I will now make a query now. So if you go to it, what happens? You can now see the total amount, the least amount is this much because it's one. If you click on it, it will not show you both the documents. This facility is not available in Ebus now. So I click on it, it will not show you. I guess one thousand three hundred twelve fifty. What are all the POs which are there? It will not show. You. So this completes the PR CPA SPO combination through which what happens? We can automate it actually, but it's a semi automation because since the price is not negotiated on the PO or PR. what happens is that 
the system stops at the auto grade area and then you only have to manually convert it and then negotiate the price and then approve it actually. Negotiate the price and then approve it. So this is the item list price is now coming on the PR automatically and then it has not been negotiated and so what happens the automation fails and then do it. Whereas if you go for a BPA, what happens is that the price is negotiated and then there is a full automation. The BPA route is exactly similar to what we have in EBIS also. In EBIS also we can have a BR, BPA and then uh, blanket release now. PR, BPA and blanket release. Here is a PR, BPA and then SPU. Right? That every functionality has been exactly retained now. Fine. There is no change at all as far as the, the BPA route is concerned. But the CPA route is enhanced. It begins with the PR. And that is the biggest advantage. Right? The CPA is now beginning with the PR. And so what happens? The people will now start to use this route. Mainly because CPA is going to deal on the terms and conditions where if the supplier is now supplying hundreds of items, we can have a CPA with the supplier for all the terms and conditions. He has to make a wooden packing. He will now make a payment after 30 days time. And then uh, what happens? Uh, all other conditions, uh, you have to uh, supply spares, all these things, whatever you want, you can mention it on a CPA. And then any item which is ordered via a PR route, what happens? It will at least take up the PR terms and conditions and then populate on the SPO. The only work which is left for the purchase officer to only negotiate the price. So the PR CPA SPO combination is a good one. We have even suggested to the customers who are migrated from EBIS basically. Uh, and now what happens? We go for the the final pair of a BPA. Now. Click on it. Let us now go and then create a BPA. Now. Click on it. Go there. And then we'll now go to create agreement. You know, going to make agreement. Now. Click on create agreement. And then here I will now make it as a blanket purchase agreement. Previously, what happens? I choose the contract purchase agreement now. Now it's a blanket purchase agreement now. And go there, click on it. And then it's a blanket purchase agreement. Click on supplier. I will now put the same supplier now. Fine, and then underscore. What happens? So sub two, I'm going to put it here. Supplier side, everything will be coming now. Click on create. We are now going to create a BPA now. Click on create. So go there. And then here. What happens? It is uh, preferable to have the start date at least. End date is not an important one. At least start date is the must know. Fine, that. Otherwise, automation normally fails. No, fine, go click on it. I will put yesterday's date. Sometimes what happens? It doesn't work properly. End date is not important. At least what happens? The start date is a very important one. In EBUS, if you don't give the start date, it fails automation actually. But here, I'm not sure about it. Uh, that uh, conditionality has been removed, I think. Fine. At least, but start date is uh, in fact what happens? Uh, more important actually. Fine, Agreed amount is exactly like EBUS. No, fine, I will not go for thousand dollars. Thousand dollars. Or ten thousand dollars. Release amount. Fine. MR release amount. Fine. Every release or every SPO must be at least hundred dollars. Okay. Fine. So the AA and then MR are exactly similar to what we have in EBS. No. Fine. And then go down. And then we'll now be negotiating the terms and conditions. Okay. No. And then we can even add a note to go. You know. Fine. Note. And then note to receiver. And then attachments also we can do it now exactly. And then uh, here, uh, what happens? I will now have what happens? I will now have a note to uh, okay. Fine. Note to supplier. I will now say BPA note to supplier. I will now have what happens a BPA attachment, a CPA attachment. I will now make it now. Click on plus now. Click on choose now. <clears throat> so we will have what on the test now. Uh, CPA attachment. We'll have the CPA attachment itself. I will now make it now. It's a BPA attachment. Uh, I will now say BPA attachment. I made attachment over here. No? The CPA itself has a, not been the BPA, CPA, and the Click on plus. Now we can have lines. In the CPA, we will not have a lines. Now here we are going to have a lines. Now click on plus. Now we can have a line. We'll have a line. Now we'll click on it. Item K99 underscore item. Give it a The description is coming. The category is coming. Supplier item also can be put. Now. I will not say what I was saying. K99 underscore sub item. The supplier is calling it as this item. We can even put it now and the price is there. And then having done this, we can even very well negotiate a discount. Discounts can be negotiated only on a BPA and not on a CP actually. And then click on edit. And then click on edit. And click on edit. Or edit here now. So click on the edit now. So we can have what happens a negotiated price now. And then here on the line level, we can have a MR also. The line must be at least for $10. And then the agreement account, fine. Because agreement amount and agreement quantity are only for information purposes. They don't have any control now, fine. Because so I'm now saying this much is the agreement amount and agreement only. Fine. So they don't have any controls, functional controls in EBIS also. They don't have any functional controls. It's only for information purposes. Fine. Because click on it. And then we have a line level MR, which is also there in EBIS now. 
we have a document level mr of 100 dollars and then line level mr of 110 dollars so it's it's also there my is exactly like this and click on it you can have a price break thank you on price break and then here the price breaks are basically what happens are shipped to organization fine k991 and then you have and then you will give a location k99 and you have so we will have a location and not put location one so if it is going to be more than what happens 100 quantities i will know what happens i know negotiated it 20% discount or some then the thing person so the moment i put the discount the price will be coming automatically accordingly you give it the price is 125 so the price breaks are exactly similar to what we have in ebus now fine what is what is these item attributes are for self service procurement actually so if you use the self service procurement what happens these things will be coming in the picture actually the normal purchase you want to there so this is all done now fine is all exactly similar to this one fine the price breaks and then the mr on the lines region fine click on okay now so that's it and then we have the cumulative pricing enabled actually you can now see uh, the cumulative fine the price break type is cumulative you know? click on it and again edit and show it to you so it's exactly similar to what we have in ebus now fine cumulative it deep it, it what happens it defaults from the uh, configure procurement business function it's cumulative <coughs> so we give, if you have expiration you can you know fine every other features are exactly similar to what we have now fine and then click on okay <coughs> and then here having done this now fine that line is now done fine go to the document controls now fine go to the controls now, click on controls i have not shown you the controls on 2000 here i will not show you fine click on the controls now in the controls what happens it is exactly similar to what we have now. this is for the multi org access control of ebus now fine if you want to have it have the agreement for multiple business units you can even give a plus and then add it. and it is exactly equal to multi org access control only on a bio work center we can provide it there now so here it is almost like a bio work center only go there automatically generate orders and then automatically submit for approval and then these things are normal ones and then we'll not come to the retroactive pricing a bit later now and then you can even have the notification to be issued to so many people actually <clears throat> so this is all there if you go to the contract it is for the procurement contracts actually it is for the procurement contracts so i think uh, Um, uh, Ram Prasad has already gone through the procurement contracts. He will give some information on this. So click on main, and then click on save. So we have ten thousand, and then uh, the document total minimum is a hundred, and then the line level total is minimum ten. And there are two level minimums now. And then click on it, and then we have an agreement amount. And then when you submit it, what happens? The approvals will be checked. Like is this ten thousand only? And no, the thing now. And then click on it, and then go there. Click on actions, and then go to validate now. So we are going to validate the BP now. So 2001 is a BPA and there is no error. Fine, click on submit now. Fine. So 2001 is a BPA that gets submitted and then it will be getting approved now. <clears throat> the 2001 is now getting approved. Now let us now create a requisition referencing this BPA of 2001. <clears throat> so go to the purchase record, purchase requisition, click on it, and then I will now go to the more task and then click on enter requisition line. You are now going to create what a requisition. So item is uh, K99 underscore. It's called item one now. I'm putting it, and then I'm not going to make a change of this now. Agreement type is for the contract token, the blanket purchase agreement, and then the number is what 2001 now. Fine, two zero, and then if you give a tab, it has to come now. So even if you write off of it, it has to come now. Fine, it's not coming. What am I getting? So 2001 is coming. Agreement number, line supplier, everything is now coming. I know that the quantity already. So I will now retain it as a one quantity. We will now see, but how many others are coming actually? So we have a line level limit of ten dollars, and then. document limit uh, document level limit of 100 dollars fine so both the errors will be coming up over here now fine we'll click on it and then go there and then we'll know what i was add to the new click on add to, add to add to cart now is now referring 2001 and not 2000 click on add to cart add to cart and we'll click on it click on review now <clears throat> so we are reviewing it now and then let us now have an attachment pr attachment actually fine with that note to supplier i will now say pr Note to supplier. I will now have an attachment. Now. Click on attachment. I will now have the PR attachment. I have the PR attachment here. So go there. I will now put the test over here. Test. I will now go for the PR attachment. Click on PR. I will now say it's a PR attachment. So click on OK. At least PR note is coming, but. Uh, 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 the pr notice supplier is coming but a pr attachment will not see whether in this document is coming up the referencing document is also referenced over here i'm going to click on it and then i will not say 1018 i am going to submit for approval it is only for 1.5 dollars which is less than 10 dollars at the line level now it has to work automatically you know? fine since we have what 
yeah, what's called yeah, uh, automation available now. When we have a BPA available. So it should not stop at the what's called your uh, auto grid area now. Go there and then do it. Click on 1018 now. And then you can now see the purchase order number has to come over here now. So click on done. So it has to show you that it is now taken up by the buyer for processing actually. And click on the pending approval. So it has to get approved now. <clears throat> so afterwards, what happens? The buyer will be taking it up for processing. So application developer is approved. The task is completed now. So click on done. And then we will now require it now. You will now see a blue icon coming up that the buyer has taken up for processing. Click on done. So you click on it. <clears throat> You can now see a blue icon is coming. And if you click on it, it has to show you that the buyer is now processing it actually. I don't know why it's not showing you. It normally displays now. Fine. If you go near it also, what happens? It has to show the buyer is now processing it actually. 1018 is a one. <clears throat> so click on done now. Fine. 1018. And then it will now automatically create a purchase order. 1018. The ones where the blue icon goes away, that means what? The auto creation is now complete actually. And then, even if you go on and search for the 1018, it will not be visible because the system would have converted it into a PO actually. And click on the now. So, the buyer has taken it for browsing. I will now go to the purchase orders area. <clears throat> and then I go there, click on it. And then I will now go to the process requisition and query 1018. 1018 is a requisition. I go in and query it now. So, it will not be visible at all. I click on search now. It won't be visible because the system would have taken it up automatically for processing and now, right? So it will not stop because it has got a BPA in it now. So it will never stop at all. <clears throat> if you have got a BPA, what happens? It won't be stopping. Now, what happens? We'll now go there and then query on the purchase orders now and we'll click on it. So click on the manage orders now and then query for the requisition 1018 now. 1018 and give it an app. And click on search now. Fine. No, sorry. It was 1018. Make a search now. Right? Once when you search for it, whatever you know, see. But the automation succeeded in creating the purchase order. But unfortunately, what happens? The approval failed actually. The approval failed. The approval has failed. Now. Fine. Click on it. So we'll now open up this purchase order and then have a look at it. Now. Fine. You have got a notes and attachments. Then you go there and then click on it. Note to supplier. BPA note to supplier is coming. Note to receiver is coming. Fine. Attachment is none actually. Fine. I don't know. Not made any attachment over here. Now. Uh, I'm not sure about it, but in the line level, if you go on and see the attachment, the mind click on attachment and go there. You know, see a CP attachment that is basically at the BPA level, we have made attachment that is coming. The PR attachment is not coming. Right? Hey, Vignesh, you make an RD and then tell me about where to see the PR attachment. PR note to supplier is coming in the line level, but PR attachment is not coming here. I don't know, I'm making a mistake about mine because I, I know that we have made one such a, uh, what about the implementation, uh, Kuwait and then. Uh, uh, they are writing it all the requirements on a note on a PR and right? that gets automatically coming in the PO. So PR, PR attachment is not coming, PR note is coming actually. I will now go there, go to actions and then go to edit now. Fine. You'll be having two errors now. You can see there will be two errors. And then go to actions and then go to validate now. There will be two errors. Line level error and then the document level error. So the total amount released against this 2001 line <coughs> on the order is less than the required minimum amount of 10. And then the total amount is less than 100. Right? There are two errors of that. So let us now solve the first error now. Right? You now go there, click on OK. You now solve the first error now. Go down. And then here, I will now increase it to what happens. Say 15 quantities. So line level, I'm making increase to 15 quantities. You can now see the total amount is now come over here now. Right? So click on the schedule now. <clears throat> you can now see it's 15 and then it's distribution of the schedule. So once when you make a change on the line level, it gets automatically communicated to the schedules and distributions automatically. But don't make a change at the schedule and then see whether the line is getting changed or not. That is not a correct way. Line you make a change, it will be getting changed in other places. So click on save now. And then again go to actions now. The error will be coming down to one only. So click on actions. And then here, what happens if you validate it, you will now have only one error. <laughs> so again, the same address coming up. Okay, you have saved it now. Click on save. Because no more than ten dollars, no more than ten dollars. I know. <clears throat> Maybe while submitting it, it will not show only one error. No, so both errors are still coming. I don't know. It's so. so let us now increase it to what happens more than this. The requester needs only one quantity because the BPA supplier is now asking for more. What happens? He is now forced to go for what happens more quantity now because he has to meet the document total also. Can go that click on it. So I know made change now as in ninety one is no one more than hundred dollars now. And click on it and then give a save now. 
and then actions and then validate it should not have any, any errors at all. Those errors are not gone actually. Okay, even one error has to go, but it goes very well in e is not I don't know why it's not there. So 3008 is a document which has been referenced uh, on 2001. It shows you the agreement reference as well as the requisition reference. Also. So both the references are there. But remember, we cannot add any reference document while you're creating a SVP or say a SPO. When you're creating it, we cannot add the reference documents at all. When you're creating it, there is no facility at all. So it has to originate only from the PR. And then we cannot reference a CPA or a BP on a SPO. Remember, that functionality is not available. It is available in EBIS, but that is not there here. I don't know why they have not made it now. So 3008 has been submitted in the Bank of Africa. And then if you go and then verify your 2001, that you cannot see this is not coming. Click on the note. It will not show you. you. Go there, click on it, and then here I will go to the manage agreements and then query for the 2001. The 3008 document will be coming on this one. And then click on search. <clears throat> so you cannot see the release amount has to come because there is under still approval now. So once it is approved, it will be coming as a release amount. Then click on search now. <clears throat> go there. Vandichi. If you click on the hyperlink on the release amount, it will not show you the 3008 document. That is not available in the US. Now we will now go for a total automation. We will now go for a total automation. Click on the note. So the complete automation. Then it is a semi-automation because it has not stopped in the CP in the uh, on the auto grid area, but it was an incomplete status. If you meet the requirements of a BPA, then it will never be doing it all. So if you go there and then click on this note, you enter requisition lines. In the what happens in your uh, home icon also, if you go there, click on it and then you go to the procurement. If you go to the procurement, the intelligence area, if you go there, go to the purchase orders or whatever it is. If you go to the purchase requisition. The failed automation, failed submission is not showing. If you go there, go to the purchase requisition, it will not show you the failed automation also. It's not showing, and the, it's not coming over there. It can be seen also. So click on the more, and then click on the enter requisition. This time, what happens? I'm going to automate it totally. So K99 underscore item one. I will now put the BPA over here now. Go there. I will put two zero and then automatically it will not show you the number now. Two zero. Two zero zero one is the one. I choose it now. And then this time what happens? I will not go for let's say 200 quantities. So that is well within the thousand limit also. All the cumulative releases put together is not exceeding this now. So all these things are coming. So you can now see the price break is coming automatically. If you go for 99 quantities, what happens? You will now have to pay what happens the price of what? You know, see 1.5 actually. And now referenced, and then the price has to come. Now, is the accumulation one? And so, what happens if you go for 98? No, 98, you have to pay one more. One dollar will be coming now. Uh, so, one, and then give a tab now. The price is one, and then if you go for two now, give a tab. So, we have already made what? Uh, in the previous one, how much I have made now? 75, isn't it? Fine, 75. That is why what happens now coming. So, if you go for 74 also, and give it up. The price is 1.5, 73. I forgot. What is the quantity there? Fine. Uh, 70. Fine. How much I have given? I don't know. It will now consider the previous ones. Fine. Go click on it. It is now showing you this price break. Fine. Go that click on it. So, based upon which, if you go for 20 quantities, give it up. that itself is not eligible for the one. One is 1.5, 2, give it up. And then give it 10 now. I think 15 quantities. I think I'm not sure about it. Somewhere. So the accumulation works with the Maya 9. So I might have given 10 quantities, and so what happens? It is now considering it. And then if it goes below beyond 10, what happens? It considers the previous ones and then give the remaining prices. So it's now coming up. So I will now, what happens? I will now go for let us say uh, 200 quantities now. So that what happens? It doesn't stop anywhere. It will be a total automation. I will now click on done and then I will now add to cart now. And then I will now submit it directly. Click on review and then I am going to submit it now. So 1019 is now created now. 1019 is now selected. So 1019 is selected. So click on submit now. So this will not stop anywhere at all. It will be getting approved also. And click on submit now. So the total automation will be happening now. It's a BPA route in which what happens? We can very well do the automation in total. <clears throat> so go to the purchase orders now. So I will now go to the what manage orders. So one zero one nine is a one now. 
requisite zero zero one nine, and then you attack. And then that will be an approved B P O construction. It takes some time for the automation to happen. So you can now see the three thousand nine is now made now. I can click on it and then have a look at it. It's pending approval actually. It has been submitted for approval also. And then it will not take some time. And then by which what happens? It will be getting open. Click on switch. It will be getting open now. So it's open now. So it's referencing this now. Fine. Go click on it. And then it's not done. Click on it. And then it is now approved also because there is no problem in the approvals. It doesn't meet the. It doesn't go to the limits actually. And then the right hand side. What happens? It shows you the analytics also. When click on the view details, what happens? It's not showing you the analytics of this particular order. It's not showing you. In transit shipments, the receipts, the invoices, and then if you click on the invoice, the payments also. So in one area, we can see all these things. It is not possible in EBS now, fine. So on the purchase order itself, if you click on the details, it will show you how much is now in transit on the shipments, and then how much is now received the gate, and then delivered it, and then how much is the invoice. Everything it will not show you in one go. That is a beautiful feature. So this is the inbuilt analytics which is available on the purchase orders actually. So every purchase order will be having an inbuilt intelligence to be showing you. It shows you the source agreement as well as it knows this one. If you click on the source agreement, it will open up on the source agreement and show it to you. Click on it, and then I guess which this much is released. If you click on the release amount of the source, it will not show you what is the purchase order amount. So this way, what happens? It will not show you everything on this now. So it's not showing you anything because there are multiple references basically. So this is not coming. So this completes the BPA route of automation. Now they have introduced one concept called touchless buying. So here in a touchless buying, what happens is that if the requester has already negotiated the price, we can very well create a purchase order without any CPA or BP. Click on the procurement. Click on the purchase order. So this feature has been introduced now. I'm going to click on it. So if you go there, and then if the requester has introduced it, what happens? You cannot do it now. So for which what happens? Sir, we have to have one more column called negotiated. Fine, that is now hidden now. So let us now bring that column by a page customization actually. So we have to bring in a negotiated column. So that what happens? Sir, the requester himself can negotiate the price and then he can convert into a purchase order automatically if he has negotiated. So this is called touchless buying. Fine, that feature has come over here now. Fine. So let us first of all introduce what happens? Sir, uh, that one now. Fine, that uh, negotiated has to come now. Fine, we'll click on the home icon. Let me open up a sandbox now. Fine, go there. So I will now go to the what's called tools, and then open up a sandbox now. So I will now go to what some preferences should be for the security console. Now go to the configuration, and then yeah, sandboxes. In the configuration, we have a sandbox now. Fine, let us now create a new sandbox. Go there. So click on create. So the name is what touchless. Always give a meaningful name so that what happens, you'll understand about why you have created a sandbox. Go there and then give it in the description also. Put in the description and then click on it and then create. Click on create. Touchless buying. I'm going to create now. And click on it and then here I have now enabled the page composer now. Find that. Click on it. I'm doing it. What happens? I have wait. There are plenty of options available here. Uh, everything is all uh, taught to technical team. Actually, I have got the technical records. So I am now enabling the page composer for this now and then click on create. Page composer is enabled for this one. Click on create now. And then it is now done now. Uh, you go there, and then I have to enter into this uh, touchless buying now. And click on it. I will now enter this now. Go to the enter now. And touchless buying. I will now enter into the sandbox now. You enter into the sandbox, and you can see on the top the sandbox will be coming. So you can now see the touchless buying sandbox is coming. Now let me open up my page, and then I will now customize the page. Actually, click on it. So once when you go it, what happens? Whatever has been hidden will all be shown actually. Right? The hidden ones on the what's called the springboard will all be shown on the touch on the sandbox actually. You go to the procurement and then I go to the purchase requisition and then I'm going to customize the page actually. Click on it. So we'll be customizing the page actually. So let us now customize the page. Click on it. Let us now open up the what's called uh, the page now and go to the more task and then edit requisition line. And when you are customizing a page, remember that all the mandatory fields must be filled. Otherwise, you cannot be customizing it. Now, click on it. I will now put K ninety nine, and then I will now put some other item. Uh, dual units of negotiation. You can just play with it. So, item description. I will now be automating it on this now. Click on Do I one? So, the quantity, the mandatory fields are available now. Now, let me go into edit the page. Now. 
So having done this, now what happens? You're going to edit the page now. So let us go there and then edit the page and all that. So click on the what's called the name and then click on the edit pages. I am going to edit the page. So remember, all the mandatory fields must be filled on the on the page you want to edit and then you only have to go to it. And click on edit pages and then it will now go into the edit mode. I'm coming. So once when you go into the edit mode, what happens? You go to the view and then go to the source. View and then source. View source. So by which you go there, it is now coming. And then whichever field you want to edit, in this area we want to edit now. Fine. It shows you area by area. Now. This is the delivery area. And then if you go there, top one, what happens is the, the main main area. So below currency, price currency is there. Now fine. click on the uh, currency itself. And then what happens if you click on it, it will now go to edit. Now. So click on currency and edit. And then go down. And then here, what happens is there is a thing. Uh, the black line is there. Fine. Go it up, make it up. Click over. So you can now see what happens. The negotiated will be there now, fine, somewhere. It's very difficult to search in this area, fine. Let it go down and then search, search now. We'll be finding a negotiated. No, it is there in the top. The is it there in the top, huh? Fifth line. Yeah, negotiated. Which one? There it is. Select Boolean checkbox negotiated. Select Boolean checkbox negotiated. Yes, exactly. Yes. Not this one now. Next one, next one. Next one, fine. This one is a different functionality. I have not understood this functionality. Negotiation required. I don't know what exactly it is. The next one is negotiated. You click on it now. Select Boolean function and go to negotiation. And then I will not edit. No, that, that will be for sourcing now. If, uh, oh, oh, oh. if you enable negotiation required, it will Oh, that will be used for sourcing, actually. Like sourcing sourcing and you learn that now, fine. It may be required for sourcing, actually. Yes. Sourcing mode. Yes. So it is a negotiated tick mark. Fine. Go there. Click on edit now. I click on edit. I'm not going to go for the edit mode. Go there. Click on it. And then I have to make it as a display visible as true now. If you put it, whatever they're not coming, you drop down and then whatever they'll be having an expression builder now. In the expression builder, if you make it the visible tick mark will be enabled now. Fine. Click on expression builder. I simply what happens, I do like this now. Fine. I don't know whether I'm doing it correctly or not. Only a technical guy can send it now. Fine. I just cut it off and then put as a true now. Fine. The expression builder, I remove it and then make it as true. May, maybe if you make it as a false, it's not going. So there is already an expression filter available here now. I don't know. They might have made it for some other reasons. Now, fine. Whether it is for that, uh, that uh, maybe with the previous flag, it may be linked. I think probably. Fine. Go there. So this somebody has to learn it now. Fine. T R U U true. I mean, you know, fine. Click on OK now. So now what happens? We can very well put a tick mark on this now. Fine. It's already put a tick mark is there now. Fine. Go there. Click on it and then click on apply and then click on OK. By which what happens? The change is now made. <coughs> now this negotiator will be coming. Fine. Go there. Click on it. And then we'll now click on close on the right hand side top now, and by which what happens? The customization is complete now. And now, if you go there, you can know, see. You have to see this now, and it's not visible. So let me go and then publish the sandbox and then see now. Go to the touch by, and then I go to the sandbox details, publish. I will now go to the publish now. So let me publish it now. And click on OK now. We'll now go into the publish screen actually. Publish sandbox. This is the publishing screen. Click on the publish now. So once when you publish, continue to publish. What happens? It gets completed. And then it is preferable to what happens to log out and log in and then see this. So we have not done now. So there's no published. I go click on it. I will not sign out and sign in. Malcolm, did you work on the page customization anyway? Anything? And efficient? No, no, no. Okay. Not. You'll be able to pick up things very fast. Actually. You're <laughs> doing things very quickly. <laughs> Where the requisition lines and then I will now put the requisition number fine K99 and then dual units of measures and then here what happens you can see oh god it has not come what are the mistake I made I don't know fine. that itself it didn't came now fine even this true the negotiator has to come now well again going to the handbox so there is some mistake somewhere uh, that is, I think I should have that I would have waited and then seen it there is I will not go to the sandbox. <clears throat> I will not say that once when it is published, we cannot use it at all. Fine. We have to create a new sandbox. I click on create sandbox. I will not say touchless buying TV. <clears throat> and then enable the page composer. Page composer. And then I click on create now. And then enter into the sandbox. You enter into the sandbox. So TV now entering in. If you want to use the original sandbox, also it is possible with the help of technical. You have to do it now. I don't know how to do it actually. Now you go there. I will now go to the procurement. <clears throat> now 
for the procurement level. Go to the purchase requisition. So here you go there. You go to the more task. Uh, yeah, I'm not, I will not open up the requisition form and then uh, afterwards I will not edit the page now. K99. You know, populating everything. Right? The negotiator is not coming now. I will know what happens. You go there. So click on edit page. Now. Edit pages. So here. I will go to the view and then go to the source now. Go down. And then I click on it and then take to the edit mode. And then we'll go up now. Negotiation. Negotiate. So if it is enabled, I think it will be coming in a white color, I think, probably. Go there, click on it and then click on edit now. Go down. It is visible, and then uh, I will say show required. This also I will not make it as one well. show required. And maybe this also will be required. There are so many systems that are required. The required. I will not put everything on. I don't know what exactly is missing it. There is one thing called show component no, no, at the bottom. Oh, oh, oh. Show component. Below your visibility. I, I will not put it. I will not remove these two things now. Fine. I will show component. I will not play and then see now. Fine. Click on OK. Click on OK now. See whether it is visible or not. Yeah, that's fantastic. Fine. Malcolm has passed the test now. Fine. Show component <laughs> is not bringing it actually. Thank you. Click on it. It's excellent actually. So that's good. <clears throat> so Malcolm will master this very soon now. You click on close now. No, it is not visible there. Click on close. The page customization is not going on. Negotiator is not coming. Click on it. And now what happens? We long go on and publish it. The show component is also required. Click on publish now. Click on OK. But sometimes uh, here uh, the visibility is uh, that supposed here show component is also required. Click on it. Well, now publish it now. Click on publish. Candidate to publish. And that's it. Fine. Go there. Click on it. <clears throat> so we have done the setups for this, what's called your uh, touchless buying now. Fine. There are some more setups are required, which will be continuing on the next page. Click on it. And then some more setups for the touchless buying is required. And then once when we do it, what happens? We can very well do the touchless buying. In the touchless buying, what happens? If you put a tick mark on the negotiator, it will automatically create a PO. So since there is not much of a time, what happens? I know I will not do it tomorrow. So tomorrow we will now see the completion of this touchless buying. Any doubts still now? With which we complete our purchase orders. Now. So in the purchase orders, we got only three purchase orders. One is what standard purchase order. One is a contract purchase agreement. One is a blanket purchase agreement. The contract purchase agreement route has been enhanced. It is now beginning with the PR. It is not beginning in the in a PR in a B in a in a EBS now. Right? It now begins with the PR. So the demand becomes the source of this now. And then it is a semi automation. It gets stopped in the auto grade area because the price is not negotiated. And so we have to negotiate the price and then we are doing. And then they have introduced the minimum release on the CPA. It is not there in EBS now. Right? It has been reduced. And then it gets automated. All the cumulative releases put together cannot exceed the amount limit. That is the same thing. Fine. There is the same concept in EBS. Fine. That is now there. So amount limit column is grayed out actually. They have purposely grayed out. I will not show you one thing. Fine. They have purposely grayed out the amount limit column. And I asked that why it is not there. So they told me in the training itself, what happens when I was doing it in the US, what happens? They told me in the purchase agreement, if you go there, when you create it, the amount limit column has been purposely, what happens? I've done it actually. And grayed out. I will not say create agreement now. If you are going to get a, what is the CPA now, the contract purchase agreement when you create it now. So the amount limit is the controlling factor, but that has been purposely uh, what happens done. Because people used to fiddle on it. And so they told me, the person who has done this automation, they told me that he has purposely hidden it. But if you want, you can very well do it. So amount agreed is not the controlling one. Amount limit is the controlling one. So the cumulative releases, all the SPOs should not exceed the amount limit. And then they have synced it. Whatever you put on the amount of uh, agreed amount, what happens is that will be getting reflected on the amount agreed. Uh, amount agreed. So if you put something on the amount of agreement amount, that will be getting copied into amount limit. And then that is the controlling factor. And then that is that is hidden actually. So through form specialization, you can even bring the amount, uh, what happens, amount uh, limit also, if you want. Since uh, they, nobody, nobody should do it, they have done purposely the hidden, that, that has been hidden. So 
the mr is an enhancement the pr cpa spo is an enhancement so there are two enhancements and then the attachment i think is all similar to what we have in evs nofin i don't think it will be changed and then there is one there are two enhancements in the, in the pr cpa spo and then for the bpa there is no change they told me they told me that they are not made any change they have exactly retained the functionality of what happens uh, the pr bpa br root as a pr bpa spo root in fusion there is no change at all as far as that automation is concerned and then they have introduced this touchless by so we will not continue tomorrow and then we will not see what uh, the what's called the touchless mind tomorrow good that uh, mm -hmm. has found that the show components is the one which is required for displaying the field now fine you just make an r and d i have given a lot of technical records and then uh, if uh, somebody goes through this what happens he can very well uh, what happens he can understand this actually right mm -hmm. now thank you okay man fine by i'm not meet tomorrow and then we'll now go for the touchless buying and then afterwards we'll now go to the receiving and then receiving and then the ppp push thank you sir bye okay thank you sir